Generally, people would not know what their own backs looked like. But Shilian was different. He was more than familiar with how his own back looked. When the kingdom of Shanla first fell, to relieve themselves of anger, the people burnt down his Bachian Taisa temple, desecrated all of his statues, stole the gems on his sword, and cleaned his attire of gold. Yet after all of that, the rage continued to burn, and so they came up with a new idea. It was to build such kneeling statues. The crown prince that was highly venerated and worshipped was sculpted into the form of one who knelt and begged for forgiveness and placed in crowded areas of town so everyone was free to spit at or kick it when they passed by and rid themselves of misfortune. Or worse, some even had him sculpted to be prostrating and used the statue directly as a threshold, allowing tens of thousands to walk all over it. In the first 10 or 20 years after the kingdom of Shanla fell, those statues were a common sight in many of the cities and towns. So how could Shilian himself not recognize his own back? Just then, the voice of a young man said that little hyena Pei Su had to hug the bitch legs of that man Ho Pei before he could ascend. So who does he think he is? He's nothing more than an exiled wild dog. To ruin my plans, once I'm through with him, even after the winds dry up his corpse, no one would dare go to collect it. Before the person himself had appeared, his cursing was already heard. Shirlian gazed over and saw a figure clad in green float into the cave. Due to a reason somehow not worth mentioning, Shilin couldn't help but look to the top of his head first and was actually kind of disappointed to see that the person had only a mask on and no light above his head. A bunch of little ghosts dressed in green surrounded this green-clad man and he stood as if he was surrounded by a circle of green light. This must be one of the four calamities in the ghost realm the green ghost, Chi Rong. Ever since Nanfeng had first mentioned the name Chi Rong, Shilin had kept it in the back of his mind and wondered if this Chi Rong was the same Chi Rong he knew. However, there was an unwritten rule that no matter if one was a demon or a ghost, they would hide all their real names and bury their past lives. Because of this, he didn't think that they were the same person only that the fake name had coincided with the real one. Yet from the looks of things, he was more than certain. If it wasn't the Chi Rong that he knew, how could there be another Chi Rong who was obsessed with the statue of the kneeling crown prince? And why would the sound of his voice be so familiar? The little green ghosts that surrounded Chi Rong were loudly acclaiming him king and wildly chattered. So Shilian somewhat figured out what had transpired. It turns out, when Chi Rong had sent a few of his henchmen to the ghost city, they failed in causing havoc and were decimated by Hua Chang. He then regrouped and was ready to fight again. But before the second round had even started, the henchmen bumped into the exiled Pei Su on the road. Although exiled in the mortal realm, Pei Su nevertheless was once a heavenly official and had nothing better to do so when the henchmen bumped into him, he thought he might as well clean them up, and so they were once again decimated. To lose so many henchmen in such a short period of time, the moment Chi Rong received the news, he was furious and cursed non-stop. Like ancestors, like descendants. That fucking man whore Pei Ming probably has sores all over his crotch. I should chop off both his and Pei Su's and hang them at their temples, and whoever worships them will bleed pus with every step. Shilin had to really suppress the urge to cover his ears. The profanities were the same. When Feng Xin got upset, his curses were also too vulgar for the ears. But as much as he swore, it was obvious that they were only words of temporary anger, and there was no real 
malintent. Chirang's curses were different. The recipients had no doubt that he truly wanted to curse them to die as crudely as the way he condemned. And he was wholly unafraid to take cheap shots, thoroughly crass and obscene. That group of little green ghosts agreed loudly with Chirong. He probably remembered the able subordinates he worked so hard to raise and continued. Too bad that strong-spirited woman Xuan Ji was captured by those two shameless pay dogs and was wronged so miserably. She couldn't be saved even now. Xielin couldn't agree with those words. Indeed, Xuan Ji had a tragic story, but not everything was General Pei's fault like Qi Rong had described. After all, those ten brides were kidnapped by her very person, and she was the one who killed them in cold blood. Strong-spirited for sure, but whether or not she was a good woman was debatable. But to say that little Pei only ascended because he begged General Pei was something Xilian couldn't agree with. After seeing so many ascend and descend, there was one thing Xilian could say with absolute certainty. The skilled may not always ascend, but the ascended are always skilled. If one is powerless, no matter who promoted them, they would not be able to overcome heavenly calamities and could only at most be an official in the middle court. Xilin hadn't interacted much with Pei Su, but even he could see that little Pei's martial power was above that of Lang Chen Cho. Power didn't equal rank. There were politics at play too. Otherwise, Pei Su would have long since gotten his own palace. Obviously, those things weren't of consideration to Qi Rong. He swore like there wasn't a single one in all of the realms he didn't want cursed to death. He called Pei Ming a man whore, Little Pei a leg-hugging dog, Jun Wu a faker, Ling Wen a bitch, Lang Chen Cho a moron, Chuan Yi Jin, shit. The water master, black hearted. The wind master, a slutty woman. He probably didn't know that Shu Ching Xuan was actually a man. If Shu Lian hadn't seen it for himself, he wouldn't be able to believe that anyone could be so resentful. Finally, Chi Rong made it to the main point, which was how Ho Chang and that low key, ship sinking black water looked down on him. They were mere supremes. One day for sure, he'd have them kneel before him. Xuelin could be angry hearing this, but because he couldn't even imagine how that would ever play out, he couldn't help but find it hilarious instead and stole a glimpse at Hua Chang. Hua Chang himself didn't have any reaction, but instead was still closely staring at that kneeling stone statue. Finally, thankfully, Chi Rong seemed to be assaged by all the cursing and changed the subject. How is the thing I sent you guys to do? Have Chuan Yi Jin and that man Ho Pei started fighting yet? He sat down as he spoke, lounging on his luxurious throne. He raised his legs and rested his boots on the shoulders of that statue, using it as a footstool. Xie Lian had been holding onto Hua Chang's arm and stopped him immediately when he felt him shuffle a step forward. He felt that the pullback may not be enough, so he drew another word in Hua Chang's palm. Thanks. Hua Chang recognized the word. He lowered his head, then glanced at Xie Lian, who was watching him with gratefulness in his eyes, thanking him for his good intentions. Then Xie Lian shook his head lightly and drew the words, listen and heaven. Chi Rong was talking as if he sent henchmen to do something, and it had something to do with those two heavenly officials. It couldn't be anything good, so Xie Lian wanted to keep listening. As for the statue getting used as a footstool, thinking back, it had even been used as a threshold before, so it really meant nothing to Xie Lian. It was only a piece of rock, not his actual person. Although he had only written those three simple words, when their eyes met, Xie Lian knew that Hua Chang had understood what he had meant. 
Hua Chang slowly held his hand tight and turned his head away, so Shirian could no longer see his expression. A little green ghost spoke up. We followed our king's instructions and have long since spread the rumours that Pei Ming wants to make Pei Su the martial god of the West. Now it's becoming more and more of a riot, so we used that as an excuse and desecrated hundreds of Mingguang temples disguised as Qiying palace devotees and no one was the wiser. My lord may not know, but those devotees are really stupid. They saw us smashing temples and smashed along with us, with even more enthusiasm. Qi Rong was pleased. Keep fueling them. Chuan Yijin can endure it, but I don't believe that Man Ho Pei Ming can put up with it. Even if what they were spreading wasn't exactly a rumour, this kind of fabrication was still full of malintent, especially something as unscrupulous as disguising themselves as mortals to sabotage temples, absolutely heinous, depraved, and perverse. No wonder that, whenever Chi Rong was mentioned, everyone in the heavens would say that he wasn't skilled, but was extremely troublesome. Xielin mentally noted, if there's a chance, do tell Jun Wu to watch out for any disputes between two heavenly officials caused by others. When Chi Rong finished with business, he laid back, his pair of long legs resting on the statue, changed position. The little ghosts immediately knew what to do and went to the small crowd of people to pick out the best cut. The one child in the group was probably not even 10 years of age and wasn't very cognizant of the situation. He blinked his large eyes and held on tight to his father's shirt corner, yanking at it the more scared he became. His young father's face was ashen pale, trying to comfort him with a trembling voice. Don't be scared, don't be scared. Yet it was obvious that he himself was terrified to the bone. One of the little green ghosts saw that there was a child and was delighted, extending its arm to grab him. The young father screamed and jolted, Xielin moved before he knew what he was going to do, but then he felt movement from the figure next to him. Xielin turned his head to see, and Hua Chang had stepped out from within the crowd. Since Hua Chang came especially to seek out the green ghost, now that he'd seen Qi Rong, he should have removed the disguise. Xielin had no doubt that Hua Chang was powerful enough to destroy everything within sight, and no one would be able to stop him. Yet, Hua Chang did not reveal his true form and maintained the skin of that normal-looking young man and walked forward lazily. A number of green ghosts raised their weapons and shouted in alarm, Stop! What are you doing? Chi Rong asked curiously, with his feet still up, What's with that little guy? Take him down. Hua Chang laughed. Won't you all show a little respect in the presence of Shanla royalty? Hearing his words, not only Chi Rong, but even Xielian was taken aback. After a frozen moment, Chi Rong stood up in a fit, snorted beneath the mask, as if his fury was changed to a mad laugh. What f***ing bravery to make such a joke before me? Tell me, and what branch of the Shanla royal blood are you from? Which one? Hua Chang replied leisurely, The Prince An Le. Shilin could feel the Lang Chen Cho Dharma doll in his arms joke once. Prince An Le was a descendant of the Shan Le royalty from the same generation as Lang Chen Cho and could be said to have been friends with Lang Chen Cho. Chi Rong's mocking laugh could be heard from under the mask. Prince An Le, I think you're seeking your own death. Who told you to start shit in front of me? The person who appointed you didn't teach you a little history. Prince An Le was the last remaining royal blood of Shun Le, and he's already dead. Who the f*** are you 
to pretend to be Shunla royalty before me. Hua Chang raised his brow. Oh, dead? How did he die? Chi Rong shouted, Take him down. Take down that odd piece of shit. Under his command, a large number of little green ghosts poured in from all around the cave, yelling. In the midst of that chaos, Hua Chang only smirked faintly. His expression was nonchalant before, but the next moment, it was as if a layer of frost had been laid upon his face. His form suddenly flickered and disappeared, appearing the next blink behind Chi Rong. He single-handedly grabbed the back of Chi Rong's head and smashed it down like a child playing with a ball. And who the fuck are you to be so insolent before me? A loud bang and that luxurious throne suddenly had debris flying. Dust filled the air. Shilin pulled the child behind himself to shield him and blocked a few small pebbles. When the dust settled, Chi Rong had disappeared. Upon closer look, he hadn't disappeared. Rather, his entire head was deeply embedded into the ground after Hua Chang's blow. Humans and ghosts alike screamed and ran away. Don't run away, Shilian shouted. If the people alerted all the ghosts within the cave, they'd be killed for sure. But of course, as always, no one listened to him. Shilian dropped his hands helplessly. Under the circumstances, he had no time to worry about others. Across the room, Hua Chang slowly knelt down. He used one hand to grab a fistful of Chi Rong's hair and pulled out a bloodied head from the hole in the ground. The body was pulled out along with the head. After a brief moment of observation, Hua Chang seemed to be extremely amused and burst out laughing. Although he was laughing, his eyes were off by a million watts, eerie and terrifying. Roya flew out and struck away a few of the little green ghosts who were trying to cut down the escaping people. Shilian then turned around in a rush, his instincts telling him that something was very wrong. San Lang? San Lang! Chi Rong's mask cracked, some pieces falling. He threw up a mouthful of blood and yelled, Somebody stop him! Y'all come and stop him! Hua Chang was just violently bashing him, but now he seemed to be at ease, as if they were the best buddies and chatting. He chuckled. Oh, didn't you know? There are some things in this world that are unstoppable, like the sun setting in the west, and also an elephant squashing an ant, or for example, me taking your lowly life. By his last line, his face was savage and ferocious. He had in his hold Chi Rong's whole body, and he bashed it down into the ground again. After a loud bang, Chi Rong's body was embedded in the ground and was smashed into a pool worse than mush. The mask on his face cracked, breaking into small pieces, revealing half a face. If anyone were to see that half a face, they'd discover a shocking fact. The green ghost Chi Rong and the crown prince of Shanle, one ghost, one god, a difference of hell and heaven, looked very much alike.